2020 has been a very unusual year for movies to say the least. We've gotten countless release date changes at this point, with movies like A Quiet Place Part 2 and Tenant being affected by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. But in spite of all this, we've still gotten quite a number of quality movies coming out on streaming platforms and premium VOD. Plus a few movies did manage to make their release dates back when theaters were still open. So out of all these movies, I have compiled a list of what I consider to be the best movies released in 2020 so far. Hi guys, Michael Abayemi here and today on the channel, I'll be counting down my top 10 favorite movies for 2020 so far. We're kicking off this countdown with Bad Boys for Life at number 10, which was incidentally the last movie I managed to see before cinemas were shut down back in March. I didn't watch it earlier mainly because I never saw Bad Boys 2, but I was glad I eventually got to see this one. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence reprised their roles as the body cop duo, ensuring that the action was punctuated with lots of laughs. The film also remains the highest grossing movie for the year so far, which only goes further to justify its inclusion on this list. Say what you will about the movie's long-winded title, but I still consider Birds of Prey one of the better movies I saw at the cinemas this year. It was definitely better than Suicide Squad, a movie I found to be disappointing despite some strong performances and an intriguing premise. In this one, Margot Robbie got to shine once again as a maniacal Harley Quinn. Even though I concede that the movie played more like a Harley Quinn solo movie than the Birds of Prey origin stories that been marketed as, that police station breaking scene was pure awesomeness though. Extraction kicked off what would be remembered as one of the strangest summer movie seasons. The movie reunites Chris Hemsworth with one half of the Russo brothers and was in fact directed by MCU stunt coordinator Sam Hargrave. The film itself boasted some relentless balls to the wall action and perhaps one of the most impressive tracking shots to be seen in an action movie this year. It is just a shame that his story was nowhere as good or original as his action proved to be, otherwise it would be sitting higher on this list. The overall movie was still more than serviceable though, which is often more than we can hope for with these types of movies. The Old Guard was yet another Netflix original based on a comic book. This time around, it was Charlie Theron doing all the butt kicking as the leader of a group of immortal mercenaries trying to stay one step ahead of those seeking to exploit their ability to heal. The Old Guard is so far the closest thing we've gotten to a true blockbuster this summer and it's more than delivered the goods on those grounds. The action was tight, the story surprisingly heartfelt and the fact that it also sets up a sequel while still feeling like a solid standalone entry is something we don't get to see very often. Lee Wanell had earned a lot of respect for his work on movies in the Insidious franchise, as well as the 2018 sci-fi thriller Upgrade. But with The Invisible Man, he has once again proven his talents for making incredible movies on a shoestring budget. His reimagining of the classic H.G. Wells horror novel is easily his best work yet, with his tension-building atmosphere and truly impressive effects and stunt work. Elizabeth Moss also gives a stellar performance as the titular villain's victim. As played out as movies featuring infinite time loops have gotten over the years, Palm Springs offers a refreshingly original take on the tired trope. The film stars Adam Sandberg and Christine Milioti as two lost souls at a never-ending wedding reception. The two appear to share an immediate chemistry, but it is actually the friendship they forge over several iterations of that same day that is most beautiful to see. The result is what I consider to be my best romantic comedy since Silver Linings Playbook. Plus anything with J.K. Simmons in it is a treat as far as I'm concerned. Onward was one of the last big movie releases to make it into theaters before the coronavirus hit and coincidentally also one of the first to really feel its impact, which is a shame because I really enjoyed the movie and felt it deserved way more success than it received at the box office. I'm not sure what it was precisely, but I found the movie to be very relatable. So much so that an unexpected turn during his third act left me in tears when everything was said and done. Leave it to the guys at Pixar to really hit you in the feels like that. 
Another effect of the coronavirus this past year was the early availability of movies on premium VOD. This was certainly the case with The Gentleman, a movie that never got a release in Nigerian theaters to begin with. I could go on a rant right now about how some of our Nigerian cinemas have failed to show some of the biggest movies over the years, but that is another video for another day. Staying on topic, The Gentleman was a return to form for Guy Ritchie, a director that brought us such classics like Snatch and Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. His latest film featured intriguing characters and great performances across the board, but my favorite was Coach, played by Colin Farrell. I know what you're thinking. Hamilton is not a movie, it's a Broadway show. But hear me out for one second. By definition, a movie is a recording of moving images that tell a story, plain and simple. So a film recording of Hamilton on Broadway still counts as one. And regardless of what you think about the looseness of that association, there is no denying that Hamilton was still an amazing viewing experience. The story is masterfully presented through great songs and performances, and the brilliance of his stagecraft is clearly on display for all to see. I would have loved to see it in its original form for sure, but given the circumstances, I am happy that we got the version that we have right now. Before I proceed with revealing my favorite movie for the year, there are two honorable mentions I need to acknowledge. The first one is 1917, a World War I movie directed by Sam Mendes. The film made waves during award season earlier this year, with its remarkable cinematography and overall execution. Then there's Bad Education, a true life drama starring Hugh Jackman as the high school superintendent at the center of the largest public school embezzlement in American history. Both movies were technically released last year, even though they didn't become available to the wider public until earlier this year. As such, it would be a bit unfair to include them on this list. And now, the moment we've been waiting for. My favorite movie for 2020 so far is none other than The Five Bloods. Released on Netflix in June, the movie showcased Spike Lee at the top of his game. It also featured a captivating performance from Delroy Lindo, who plays the self-appointed leader of a group of veterans returning to Vietnam after many years. The movie also arrived at a time during which its message against social injustice was most needed. But even accessing it outside of those circumstances, the film is still a brilliant tale of the camaraderie between brothers in arms and how the horrors of war can shape a person even many years after that war has ended. And there you have it folks, my favorite movies for 2020 so far. The year is far from over though, so hopefully we're still going to get some quality movies to watch and discuss before the year runs out. Were there any glaring omissions in my list? then be sure to let me know in the comment sections down below. But until next time, this is Michael signing off.